What's going on, people? I'm back again. You see, the Bible tells us so many things that we need to pay attention to. God said he'll give you up over to your vile imagination, your vile passions, your vile desire. He'll give you over to him. He said he'll harden your heart. Think about Pharaoh. Well, he keep warning you, keep warning you. But the more you refuse, the more your heart gets hardened. You ain't going to hear what God got to say anyway. It goes for me and anybody else. And that's what a lot of churches are doing these days. They have hardened their hearts. So the truth can't even make, be made manifest in them. You know what's being made manifest in them? The truth that they are liars. <laughs> that's what shows up. You know, I'm going to bring up Christmas one more time. You mean to tell me all these years of these people preaching the gospel and they agree with that. Knowing all the things they know, this has been passed down from, I didn't hear make up, I didn't hear even Billy Graham talk about Christmas and many other pastors. And I'm like, how can y'all, y'all can talk about drugs, alcohol, everything else, but you can't see clear that Christmas is not of God and you encourage it. Maybe because it's fun. Maybe because it's traditional. Mm -hmm. And I try to wonder that, like how? How could these men and women of God indulge in Halloween? When I only been following the law for 13 years, and some of these pastors say they've been preaching for 35, 40 years. This is their 40-year anniversary. Yet, they still celebrate Halloween. Still celebrate Christmas. Still celebrate Easter. But the thing is, people are like, well, it must be okay because God's not doing anything about it. <laughs> Let's, let's put it this way. There's a punishment after death. And you can die in sin. <laughs> and if you die in your sin with no repentance, what happens? Now, what did they say in the book of Eli? I mean, Samuel. He said, I'm thinking the book. <laughs> the book of Eli. Anyway. What did he say? You know, just think about it now. If a man sinned against God. Who's going to vouch for him? My people perish for lack of knowledge. Everybody love to quote that. But do you really understand? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do you truly understand that? If you fear the God, fear God, you learn to keep his commandments. You grow. You don't stay stuck in the same environment. As I was saying, 13 years now. And God revealed this to me in 13 years. So I bet you. I don't like the bet. But I can tell you that I guarantee you he didn't reveal it to them too. Now this goes back to what I talked about yesterday. It's, I mean, last week it's better to not have known the truth than to know the truth and turn back. Now think about it. I didn't had this conversation with so many people about Christmas, Halloween, Easter, different days. And most people know the truth. The majority know. Well, we know what it's about, but we do it for Jesus. Oh, really? Oh, really? It's for Jesus to go against his words and his commands and cause other people to sin. What he said, you cause my people to error. You cause my people to abhor the offering of the Lord. Think about these extortioners. It's always begging for money. And then they mad when people are like, hey man, this ain't how it is. Mm. Mm. This ain't how it is. They need to read the story of Moses. I ain't seen this preach yet. When Moses was gathering all the materials he needed to build the tabernacle of the Lord. And Aaron, or one of the people that was working with him, was like, hey, the people that's giving too much. The people have given too much. You're like, tell them to stop. That's enough. I'm trying to wait for the church to do that. No. They want to keep begging and keep getting bigger churches. I ain't hear the preach, heard the preach yet. If you heard the preach, let me know so I can watch the video. Because <laughs> I sure has not heard that preach yet. You don't hear really too much preaching about Eli and his sons. About what happened. 
Everybody want to talk about the goodness of God, how the God can bless you, how God can look after you. But he told, you know, he said, if you keep my commands and keep my statutes and stuff like that, I, I would send my angel, he would go before you. But he said, this angel don't play. This angel gonna correct you. It's got power to do so. <laughs> the angel of the Lord. You can get a blessing or a curse today. And the thing is, I think it was Ecclesiastes or Proverbs. He was like, people are upset because judgment from the Lord is not executed speedily. But the thing is, that's a folly in itself. Because God knows exactly when to uh, pronounce judgment because he's perfect. God is just. You understand? He's not equal. Yeah, whatever. That's what they say. Why this happened and now that happened? Because God knows the hearts and souls of each and every man, woman, and child on this earth. And God's given everybody a chance, a, a special chance, to get close to him. Now, to think about it, everybody died different ages. So God works differently. But the same on every soul. Now, he let them go and do this for years. You see, he was expecting, I don't know this for a fact, but you can tell, he said, you honor your sons more than me. So he was expecting Eli to eventually be like, lay off the smack of down on his son. Strip the office from him. Take him out of the office. But you know why a lot of these, this day and age, all the churches are almost connected. They got from they got conventions, they got a hierarchy in the church. They got to go to this church convention where there are different other people in different positions in the church and they go over everything together. They know everything. Mm -hmm. You understand? There's no excuses for what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now just take the Sabbath day. Everybody know the true Sabbath. But is everybody executing this true Sabbath? And I know you people, well, we say, if y'all got to do is have faith in God and believe. Well, in the New Testament, he said, if you love me, you keep my commands. So what's the use of having faith and saved by grace if you don't keep his commands and thinking it's okay? You understand? Let's say I'm a drunk. And after I give my life to Christ, I remain a drunk. I'm I'm in danger of hellfire. They say I give my life to Christ and I'm a fornicator. And I continue to fornicate. I'm in danger of hellfire. He said, all oh, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is true. No man can look up and look up in another man's face or look in the mirror and say, I have not sinned. But he said to go the way, he said, sin no more though, unless a worse thing come upon you. You see what happened to David? Strife in his house. And some people he didn't even correct to the last minute. He didn't correct Solomon. He told me, but he warned Solomon multiple times. But he didn't finally come to him until he was old. After he didn't built thousands of groves and idolatrous things in the land. The damage had been done. Now think about it. With all this, I'm looking around for them. I, I, every time I talk, I get to this spot, it seems like I'm always by this pumpkin pants for Dolphin Way Methodist Church. And then I'm always next to the church around the same time period, every time. And it's kind of messed up, people. Don't you think that's confusing? And I'm sure the people around back then, they was like, man, you know, uh, Pinehas. And his brother, Hoffney, they sleep with half of the women now, man. I need to be a preacher too. If it's, if it's that easy, I can get away with murder. No, you can't. You ain't getting away with it. You ain't getting away with it. And the thing is, Eli didn't get away with it. Let's go to, I think it was Ezekiel. When he was like, if there's a man caught in sin, and this applies to everyone, just want to let you know this. It ain't just the preachers and the priests and the bishops that's supposed to correct people. It's your job too. He said, if a man is caught in a sin and I tell you to warn him of his sin, 
and you don't, his sin will be upon your head. Mm -hmm. Well, if you warn him and he listen, you'll save him. If you don't listen, you'll save yourself. You see, people don't understand that as a Christian, correction is part of your job description. Mm -hmm. You got to line up with the word though, but you got to tell people their errors, whether they like it or not. I ain't saying get there and debate and argue with them about it. Tell them what's up. If they don't want to listen, dust your feet off like the New Testament says and move on to the next. Because everybody's not going to listen. But think about Eli and his authority. He could have dismissed, he could have fired his sons. He chose not to. Take a business, for example. Take a business. You know someone steals in your business and they constantly steal and you keep hiring them back. Yeah, I know you love them. And I know you care about them. But ain't that kind of foolish? To keep letting a steal back into your, a thief back into your employment? Mm -hmm. With no change being seen, evident? I done seen that happen multiple times. Eventually, you got to cut the head off the snake. Mm -hmm. Whoop. That's exactly what Jesus did. That's exactly what the Lord did. That's exactly what God did. He cut the head off of Eli and his sons and replaced them with somebody he knew who was going to do it the right way. I remember when Samuel was, uh, uh, Samuel was so upset when the people was like, we want a king like everybody else. You're like, what? You don't know what you're asking. We want to be like it. Oh, boy. I'm glad when I love, when the Lord says, just bring thoughts to my head. We want a king like everybody else. We want to be just like everybody else. Halloween. We want to be just like everybody else. Christmas. We want to be just like everybody else. Easter. We want to be just like everybody else, Valentine's Day. We want to be just like everybody else with no consequences. You know, years ago, I went to a place called Thailand. And over there, the LGBT community, wasn't called the LGBT community at this time, but trans are embraced over there. They call them lady boys. They're embraced. They're part of the culture. Nobody says anything about it. It's not even frowned upon no more. They didn't did it so long that it's normal. Oh, you see what I'm getting at? You can get used to sinning. You see the hardness of your heart? God letting it in a nation, and God's just gonna let it keep going. That's why Revelation talks about the Bible, the world getting worse, not better, before he comes. Mm. And then after he comes and get his people, it's going to get even worse. Mm. Before the rapture, before the beast comes, he's going to snatch his people out. Mm. Ain't that scary? So that means he's letting everybody else keep doing what they're doing for the judgment. You know, I pray. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want anybody to be left behind. The Bible says he don't he don't want anybody to perish, but that all might be saved. Might be. So you think people, God ain't just, you think God just waking up people in the morning and saying, hey man, don't stop celebrating Christmas because they hate you. You think they telling you to stop celebrating Halloween because they hate you? No, they love you. And it's their job. If God revealed it to them, your job is to reveal it to others. That's the whole point of your eyes being open. So your light can shine. So you can do what God tells you to do. And not, and do not what he tells you not to do. You may fall short, but stay at it. Because you said in a while, if you faint not, he will perfect you. 
If you faint not, you can stay at it. You see, the, what's the difference? The main two key elements different from, what's the, I mean, the main element different from Saul and David. Both sinners, both men of God. And I'm talking about Saul in the Old Testament. What's the difference? When Saul was corrected, he went and did the worst he did when he did it again. Rebelled against God again. Was disobedient to God again. When David was corrected, he repented and did it no more. He was a he was a womanizer. Do you get it? He was a womanizer. When God gave him that punishment, he accepted it and continued to follow God. And the thing is, he sinned a few times after that. But he stayed at it. I'm not telling you you can sin and be forgiven. I'm, well, I am telling you that. You can sin and be forgiven. But sin less. Don't sin. Try your best not to. That goes for me and everybody else. You understand? And the thing is, if you do, don't fall away. Keep calling on God and he'll fix it. He'll take that away. If you show obedience, but if you keep indulging in these things, why would he take it away? He's only going to harden your heart. So think about this world, this United States of America that we live in. And how many churches still celebrate Christmas? Because it's been going on so long that the world is under the sway. Oh, cause I mean, Satan, I mean, Santa, spell Satan if you change these two letters around. It's like, how many how many answers do you need? And I know there are some churches that celebrate it and don't indulge in Santa Claus or old Saint Nick. But the, the thing is, you're still embracing a man-made day because nobody knows the exact birth date of God. <laughs> I bet you, did you catch that? <laughs> Because he don't have a, he's eternal. He's been there around. So how can you give a birth date to somebody who said, I've been there since the beginning? Jesus. I'm just saying that. So, okay. You took away Santa Claus, but you still indulge. Right? On a false day, the 25th of December. It's not Christ's birthday. And no lies of the truth. Right? So, all right. So that means you embrace the lie. You see, that's what I use to tell people. If it's not true, it's not of God. So let's take the, the guy who said, I can sleep with many, as many women as I want. If it's not true, according to the word of God, it's not of God. It's very simple. But I'm talking about, man, he warned and he was he was this he said think about it i know the thoughts the plans i have for you says the lord right so he had a plan he told he lied a plan i set you up i gave you an effort i set you up to build my people and this is what you do you and your son you let your son just run rapid he said a pastor should be what a man who knows how to run his house well, having his children and what? Subjection. So he didn't have his kids in subjection. So it was about time for his replacement to come anyway, because he couldn't get his kids to be obedient. Not that your kids gonna be perfect, but they need to keep the statutes of the Lord for the rest, right? So this goes back hand in hand. With a lot of things I've said before. So how can a, you have a single pastor? Rebellion? Let me say this in slow motion. Because everybody think all witches and warlocks are people that wear black pointed hats and broomsticks and carry magic wands. But let me tell you what the Bible says here about witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So imagine how much witchcraft is actually going on in churches that goes against God's commands. But they wipe their mouth like they ain't did nothing. <laughs> and they will be punished for that. Woe to those who teach. They will 
faced a greater condemnation, better safe than sorry. Like, let's put it this way. If it's a little speck of doubt, don't do it. One thing about it, the Holy Spirit helps with your discernment. But the thing about it, he'll dull your discernment too. It goes part of your hardening of your heart. If you keep rebelling against God, he's going to give you over to your vile passions. Because he's like, you ain't you listening to what I got to say anyway, so do it. Now that he wants you to, because the Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. So people, what are you going to do? You got to keep doing what the world says, dude. The world is embracing LGBTQ, and we shouldn't embrace it. We should love them, but we shouldn't embrace the concept of anything that goes against God. It's very simple. You understand? Especially in the house of the Lord. The house is called by the name of the Lord. And then they wonder why, why people ain't going to churches. Because we know next year you're going to do the same thing. You're going to indulge in Christmas again. He says a lot of things I don't believe in. I don't believe in Sunday school study books. I don't. I believe if you're led by the Spirit, you're going to read what God wants you to read. I don't believe in a lot of that stuff. That means so many churches are going by a rhetoric that's set in place by the churches because they're the ones that make these study books. So it's exactly what they want you to study. I'm not saying it don't work. But eventually the Spirit got to step in. You know, you got to go against the grain. What I'm going to lead you with what Paul said. Whether I come with the sword or whether I come in compassion, I don't know. Whatever the Spirit leads me to say. Not in those exact words, but that's basically what he's saying. Whatever the Spirit tells me to talk about right now, that's what you're going to get. Not what's scripted. If you haven't given your life over to Jesus Christ, I advise you to do so. So you can't be bamboozled. I've been using that a lot lately. So you won't be tricked. So you won't be beguiled. So you won't be seduced to follow after false leaders. Leaders who were set in place to do the right thing, but once they get there, they leave off reform and they go back to the tradition. <laughs> a man and woman. I'm sure every preacher that was put in the position that's supposed to be there. Now, let me put that now because a woman I'm supposed to be there. Every male that's put in that position for reform to do the right thing and line up with the word. You see, I don't even really talk about stuff like girlfriend and boyfriend because it's irrelevant. Girlfriends and boyfriends who have sex are just fornicators. I don't even push that issue because I see, I know people have relationships. Uh, I don't endorse any other relationship. Like if you got a girlfriend and a boyfriend, it just be better be there. Y'all just friends. I ain't talking about friends with benefits. I'm talking about just friends, and I don't see no problem in that. That you're having a courtship with someone. And I'm like, Houston, well, why can you talk about that? Because you used to be a fornicator. Used to was a rooster. That's what it's a saying people say. But uh, once you know better, you do better, right? My flesh sometimes may want to do some fornicative acts. But I call on the Lord. And I trust in his word. And I fear him. And I don't want to disappoint him. So I do the right thing. Not all the time. I ain't finna sit up here and say I always do the right thing. I don't. Sometimes I fall. Just like the rest of us. You know, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, I'm going to end with that. Uh, Psalm 32, I think. One of my favorite Psalms. And I just want y'all to understand some things. Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not any equity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My marshes turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. 
For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto thee, him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with sons of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near to thee. What he's saying? Open your mouth. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him all about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all you that are upright in heart. Have a blessed day.